Hey everybody, so here's the deal. I'm gonna do one more video on replacing the XT60 connectors on the Ender 3. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because TH3D just released a full wiring kit for this. This is the full wire, one meter each of the black and the red with the connectors on the end and they're shrinked. I tell you what, it's awesome. I believe they're only charging $6.99 for this too, which is a lot cheaper than I paid for the wires and the connectors and then those uh, shrink and solder connectors as well. So this is a much better option. And all you need is a screwdriver and the Allen wrenches that came with a kit. You don't need any other tools to do this. So my name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. <laughs> So like I said, we're gonna replace the XT60 connector cables on the Ender 3 again. I'm gonna use some of the footage I used in the other videos to speed this process up because I've already done this twice. We are gonna use the full wiring kit that TH3D sent us and I definitely appreciate that from them. The links will be in the description below, so check it out and let's do it. So I went ahead and removed the filament before I started this process so you won't see any filament here. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the power supply using these two bolts right there. So we're just gonna grab our Allen wrench and go ahead and loosen it up. I'm not gonna take that one all the way out yet because I don't want it to fall. And we're just gonna go ahead and remove, hold the back here, and remove the power supply from the Ender 3. All right, so once the back two bolts are removed from the bottom of the power supply, you can go ahead and unplug your XT60 connectors, which will be right here. I'm using the same Ender 3 to do this as I used in the first video. So to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these two wires, just like that. So when you unplug your XT60 connectors, it'll be separate, your power supply will be separated just like that. Then you can go ahead and pull the bottom off slowly and you can set it down just like this. So what we're gonna do next is actually, we're gonna work on uh, checking the ground on these. If you guys saw the TH3D live stream recently, you saw how bad the ground is on the stock Ender 3 power supply. The Pro, you have a Meanwell power supply, so you don't need to do this next step. But in our case, in the, in the standard Ender 3, you'll need to work and uh, double check the grounding. There is, uh, six screws here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go ahead and remove them at this time. So now I have all six screws taken out and I'm going to slowly lift the top and set it to the side here. Then what we want to do is, let me see if I can pull it into zoom here. There is a screw right down here and it's a Phillips head screw. And what TH3D said is that this right here is your grounding screw. So what you wanna do is just take your screwdriver carefully and make sure that that grounding screw is tight. So we double check that screw, um, as you can see right here, and we made sure it was tight, and that's gonna help us moving forward. Then we're gonna do uh, just make sure there's no film anywhere around here. Um, when he checked a couple of them, he found uh, the plastic film. So make sure that's all pulled off. And then once that's ready, uh, you can actually go ahead and put your cover back on and put the screws back in, all six of them. We're going to do that now. Okay, now that our six screws are back in, our case is put back together, I made sure they're good and tight. And what I'm going to do now is set the power supply off to the side and we're gonna to go to the printer. So once we got that done, we're gonna to move to the printer here. We're gonna remove one, two, and three. So there's a, a bolt here, here, and back here. And we're gonna take all three of those out and we're gonna do that now. So once you removed all three of those screws, what you're gonna do is carefully go ahead and lift this top plate off. And I say carefully because the fan is gonna be connected right there. Got to be careful you don't want to pull those wires out and you can go ahead and set it next to it and if you really want to you can go ahead and pull the wires to your fan out that way um, it's separated there and you can set that to the side so once you got the top popped open 
we're going to go ahead and disconnect the power wires from the board. Where you find them is on the end of the board here, and you'll see these two right here. So they actually come in right here and they connect with these two. You'll need a flathead screwdriver. I just grabbed the one that came with the kit quick. And you're just going to go ahead and uh, loosen those two screws in there. If I can get my hand out of the way, then you can see it. So go ahead and loosen those two screws. So the next thing I did was I laid down the Ender 3 on the extruder side of the uh, printer, just very carefully laid it down, and it kind of floats on that X end stop area. Then what we need to do is take off this bo bottom case because when I was going to replace these, I realized that they actually taped them into the wire loom here. And we want to get around that. We want to make sure we get these out clean and put our new ones in. So go ahead and take this screw out here. After you got this screw out, there's actually two in the front on the bottom of the uh, extrusion here. And we're going to need to grab a Allen wrench and remove those as well. Once these two are removed here, let's go ahead and slide that back around. And we can actually pull very carefully and set down our motherboard just like that. So it's kind of hard to see, but your two power wires here, they go in through your black tape and then they tighten in to where we loosened them earlier, right? So if you carefully grab a hold of them very carefully and pull them very slowly, most of the time they'll actually slide right out of that tape. And that's what we're trying to do. So I got the old wires removed and this is where we need to make a decision. So the new wires are pre-stripped from TH3D, which is awesome, right? But they're pretty long, one meter each. And it's hard to see that. Let's see, there we go. So one meter each. So I actually like to shorten my cables up. You can put these directly in with no other tools and you're good to go. Myself, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these uh, to the size of the old wires, just so they're a little bit cleaner on my printer. So I'm gonna lay them out like that, and then I'm gonna lay these, or at least one of the old wires next to them, and I'm gonna kinda cut them about the same length. So I'm gonna lay this next to it, I'm gonna measure it, pull it tight, and I'm going to probably give myself just a little more than this, but I'm going to go ahead and cut these. So I just used the flush cuts that came with the kit. And the benefit of this is that we actually have enough to do two full printers if you, bought, if you had the other connectors at home. Once you have them cut to your length, or if you don't want to cut them, that's fine too. What we're gonna go ahead and do is feed them through like we did before. And I did not strip them yet because it's easier to feed them through this loom without them being stripped. So once we get them all fed, I see it there, just like that. Then, then I will take my stripper, go ahead and strip the wire off just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and get them screwed in now. So once we got that far and we got our wire stripped, we're gonna to wanna to take and just give them a little bit of a twist, just so they are kind of together, so they go in those terminals. Just a little bit of a twist, just like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the red one on the inside here and make sure all the wire goes in there and take your your flathead screwdriver and tighten that terminal down from the top just like that do the same thing for the negative or the black wire we're going to go ahead and make sure you're got a good uh, twist there just enough to get it in oops and you gotta make sure that all the wire goes in there because any of the wire hanging out, if it touches that other side, it could short and that would be bad. 
with these 12 gauge silicone wires, they're pretty big too. So then once we got that pushed in, as you can see here, go ahead and tighten the top down just like we did with the other one. Make sure they're tight, just like that. So that's what you have now. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and start putting it all back together. Um, I like to first start by pulling out my wires just a little bit more and we'll be able to tell how much we need to once we get this back together. So go ahead and take your board and go ahead and start getting it back together like it should be. And you can start by, you know, they're, see these two wires are way too long, so we're gonna have to pull them back like that. Just, there we go. So they're much shorter in here. So once we get the back wires in the channel here, I turn my printer and I wanna put the two front bolts into the extrusion for the front plate here. So go ahead and line up those screws and get those started. And sometimes those are the tricky ones and just make sure you know, you're not pinching any wires or anything like that. So these are the two screws here. We're gonna go ahead and get them put back in. So once these two are tightened in, that'll actually help uh, straighten everything out. Then what we're gonna do is turn the printer sideways again and we're gonna take the smaller uh, bolt that we took out and go ahead and put it back in here. So grab your Allen wrench and that should tighten right in just like that. And notice these are through and under this right in the cutout here. I actually printed this, it's a, on Thingiverse, I can put the link below, and that protects the wires from the, the sharp frame edges there. So now we're looking through the top and you can kind of see down in here, these are the new wires you put in, red on the inside, black on the outside, and we're just gonna go ahead and put the top plate on now. So if you, here's the top plate, if you did take your fan out, go ahead and reconnect it now. It can only go in one way. So you would go ahead and push it in and make sure it's tight. And then the top plate will come on and sit in here just like this. And we'll go ahead and put the three screws back in now. Okay, so once you get all three of the bolts put back in the top, Let's go ahead and turn our printer around and we're almost done. So if we go in for a closer look on the power supply, we'll notice that our positive is in number three here. So one, two, three. And our negative is in number six. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six for the big power supplies in the standard Ender 3. That's also in a V plus and a V minus slot. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this up. So we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew the positive and the negative at this time. So go ahead and do that. And I like to make these pretty loose for our new wires that are coming in. So go ahead and make them pretty loose in there and pull those old connectors out. So the other thing we wanna do while we're in here is just go ahead and make sure all of your other connections here are screwed down tight. You don't want any of these to be loose. Uh, Tim found a bunch of loose ones on the TH3D live stream a couple days ago and that's something that we need to get away from. So go ahead and get that done. We have number three and number six raised up and we're gonna move on to the next step. So now that we got everything put back together, we can take the TH3D wire kit like that. We can push it through the bottom of the power supply. And I like to go underneath the current wires here. Then what we can do is take our red wire, put it in the number three slot, just like that. Take our black wire, put it in the number six slot just like that. And all we have to do now is go ahead and tighten these down. Just 
just like that. Flip the top cover down and we're gonna reassemble. And we're gonna go ahead and carefully put this back together. So you slide it up carefully and then you go ahead and replace the two screws that go in here. So now I have these two back in and we're ready to put our power supply back on the frame of the Ender 3 and we're gonna do that now. All right, you can see now that I've attached the power supply back on. Something to note when you're putting the power supply back on, be very careful because the metal is very thin in the back of this power supply and it will strip out if you're not careful. So we've gone ahead and turned the printer around. You can see the cables in the back here, they go straight in. No longer do we have the XT60 connectors. We can actually uh, cable these back up with a little bit of cable management and the little C-clips that I really like to print and I'll go ahead and do that when the video's done. The next thing we need to do is plug this thing in and power it on and make sure everything works. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, we powered it back on, everything came up great. We didn't have any smoke, which is great. We went ahead and I'm preheating for PLA now and we can see the temperatures rising on both, which is awesome. So I think we're good to go. We now have 12 gauge silicone wire and no longer do we have those dangerous XT60 connectors. Well, that's it. We've successfully replaced the XT60 connectors on the Ender 3 with TH3D's brand new direct replacement wire kit. Check it out on their website. It'll be linked below. Thank you so much for TH3D and Tim for sending me that kit. I appreciate it, I hope you guys love it. And don't forget, you don't need any tools for this unless you wanna cut those wires and make them a little shorter. Otherwise, you just need what came with the kit to replace these wires, which is awesome. I hope you guys learned something today, and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, we're getting closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, I hope you liked the video. Click the like button below if you did. If you wanna see more, click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time we go live or we put out a brand new video, click that little bell. We're going to Murph this weekend and we're going to be live a lot. You guys have a great weekend.